You guys want to see something cool? Check this out. Got this little remote right here. Little key fob. And uh, try to get a good clear shot of what I'm trying to open up. But uh, yeah, there it is. So I'm going to just hit this little button right here. And we're going to see if this opens up. Usually it opens up from this distance. So let's try it. Yep, it's opening up. It's a very slow process, but take a look. So yeah, I'm able to open my chicken coop door from the house with a little click of a remote. Pretty uh, innovative, if I say. But you just giving them water? Did you give them water yesterday? Yeah. How much water they got? Well, moving on. I didn't really show you guys the improvements I made in my working video of just getting it done. I'll link it up top. But, whoo, there's some happy girls. They've been staying most of their day uh, inside the coop because we got some aerial predators that have been giving us a lot, of, uh, a lot of trouble. We've already lost two birds. And it's an owl again, of course. So we try to keep them in. And uh, when we get them outside, only when we can be with them. But yes, we... Uh, Obviously, we fenced in the whole area here. We put an electric fence around it, so it's not ground predators we have to deal with. Um, got the got the inside changed out. We made some aid boxes. What's up, girl? Yep. Then we built up a nice little uh, chicken roost there. And we made it so it will actually fold up and we can attach it up top there. So when we clean this out, we got plenty of room to work. I also ran an electrical box here that goes up to a four outlet receptacle. So we can run our uh, heaters and whatever else we need to, lights and such. Those will come later. Just remember there's a fence down there. Getting pretty good at that, bud. <laughs> oh yeah. You know chickens, they don't like the snow too much, so wherever there's dry ground, that's where they're gonna be hanging out at. Ooh, it's slick. Boom, she's working. <laughs> oh boy. It's kind of a warm day out today. We've got an owl that is just terrorizing our birds day and night. He beats up against the coop at night and uh, he gets them at dusk and he gets them at early morning sunrise. And he's also been getting them during the day. So the problems that we're having right now, like I was saying, is uh, we got an owl that's attacking our flock here. And there's nothing you can really do uh, about an owl for dispatching it because it is a predatorial bird and it's protected. Mother of God. Really bad, I'm gonna have to call the game warden and have them take care of the situation. But we've lost two birds to this owl and that's the worst thing about aerial predators is the fact that they have no limits. There's nothing, there's no electric fence, wiring, 
or anything that's going to keep them out besides a net and you guys might be asking why i'm not going to go with a net again well, speaking of which there goes flies and hawk just flew off um reason why i'm not going to go with the net again is because one i have a very large area i do plan on expanding my flock to be bigger than this and uh they're just a super pain in the butt i mean <laughs> they are just a super pain in the butt y'all keep it down i'm trying to i'm trying to talk to the people here so but y'all don't say that shut up wake up my dad and get me grounded um when i say that the, the netting that I had up top, that was really uh, effective at keeping hawks and, and stuff out because we did have a hawk that was going up there and eating the birds for dinner on a daily basis. Well, the problem with that is branches and leaves and everything falls in that net. And it's like Velcro or it, you ever, better, better explain it this way. Have you ever tried rolling jumper cables up or, or dragging them or picking them up, take them somewhere? Those things, uh, if you jumped out of a, pla a plane, with a set of jumper cables, good chances are that you're gonna you're gonna be saved because those jumper cables are gonna catch on something and uh, save your life. Same thing goes with netting above coops. There is always gonna be something getting stuck in that netting. You can't get it out. It's a pain. I don't want to go that route anymore. So I need you guys' help to figure out what I can do to protect this flock against this owl that's hitting in the evening, early morning, and during the day. I can't pattern the owl. The reason I know all this is because I got a game camera set up down there and uh, these birds have been getting terrorized by this owl. Now, a hawk does this flyby, sits in the branch, swoops down, gets his bird, takes off. These owls, what they do, because it happened with my meat birds, they'll come in here and they'll chew the heads off of as many chickens as they possibly can and then take off and they'll come back and eat the carcasses later. And, uh, that's that one did. I got a lot of photos and pictures of this owl coming back because I left the carcass out here so I could see what was coming back because I was hoping it was a raccoon because raccoons we can dispatch. I figured it was coming down this tree, jumping branches and whatnot. So not the case, it was an owl. And uh, we let that bird uh, go to nature instead of just throwing it in the woods and having it eat over there. I probably created a bad habit, but we've been keeping the birds locked up been keeping them locked up so that um, you know maybe that bird will forget that this is a food source and and move on to another hunting ground but I don't think it's gonna be the case so one thing I did that probably didn't help with the situation <laughs> and I it's all on me is I have a deer feeder right there if you guys have ever seen that or noticed that I have a deer feeder up there and uh, Deer aren't the only thing that eat from that feeder. So do squirrels and rodents, like mice and rats and stuff like that. So what did I do? I, I, I created a, a primo, uh, what do you want to call it? Target enriched hunting ground for these, uh, for these owls and hawks. And yep, I'm gonna have to deal with that on my own now because I created that situation. But in the meantime, I would like to figure out how we're gonna deal with these birds right now and not have them live in a life trapped in that coop it's a big coop they got plenty of room to run around that's a good thing but i, I kind of like them out and about they don't like working in the snow too much though <laughs> they are getting venturous though slowly going out in the snow let's go check out inside this coop what's up <laughs> How dare I? I think I may have disturbed the missus here in the egg box. I'm sorry. You more willing to get back up in there. So Wow, she's 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 mad. So I have a lot of these little chickens still that are just like they're I don't know they're probably six months old and they're trying to uh trying to get used to going outside they won't go outside yet but wow get some pretty good egg production here I know I need some more straw in those boxes okay 
Let's get out of here and let her do her thing because she's, she's mad. <laughs> Yeah, take it outside with your loud mouth. So, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, we got plenty of room. We got to change out the bed in here. We bought uh, flakes for that. But we built them this really cool roost, which I put on bolts that I could pivot up and I can anchor it to the top and get it out of the way. So when I clean it out, I'm not dealing with um, the roost, working on the roost. Uh, I think we're going to get another heated water bucket in here. I do have four receptacles up there so that'll be good and we'll probably get rid of this chain heat uh feeder because we uh we put this in here because we wanted to give enough feeding opportunities for the larger birds and the smaller birds because those bigger birds they tend to be a little bit bully when it comes to their food and these smaller birds so they are big enough to hold their own but they are learning quick what the pecking order is in this coop now we did build our uh, top boxes here, or our top box here. Uh, we got rid of the other one. Didn't really like the vibe of it. Put it. We kept our center bar in the middle so they can jump and get in the next box as well. But for the most part, it's been pretty good. I really enjoy having this door because one, it's just easy getting in and out. And two, on good days, I can pull down the screen and I can put it back up. Now. The other purpose that this, this show, oh, ooh, no, can't have that. The other benefit that this has is the fact that it lets sunlight in, so it heats the inside of the coop naturally with uh, some sunlight. So on those cold days, they got a little bit of warmth in there, and they're not totally freezing. Wow, these girls are really getting comfortable out here in the snow. Now, you guys got to be careful because that owl's out there hunting around. He still ain't gone yet. But I will definitely say that that coop door huge huge upgrade it's supposed to work on a light sensor but the photo cell went out so i bought a new one haven't had time to put it in yet but i've been using it on a remote so not too bad with remote access it gets the job done and uh we can choose to uh, open and close it from up the top at the house so not a bad deal i appreciate you guys watching uh if you guys haven't checked out my new series in the garage at sunny soap garage be sure to check that out if you guys like watching people work on cars um, other than that we are doing pretty good around here gonna work on that owl problem be sure to leave a comment try to help me out and i'll see you on the next episode thanks guys